In today's video, 3 million of every World War II army is currently defending the beaches of Normandy. We have 1 million shotgun units that are going to be charging the LCVP Higgins boats. On top of that, we have Russians on the beaches here that are going to be providing covering fire. And then in the back lines, we have British, German, and Japanese soldiers holding the coastline, along with Sherman tanks, Panzer Vs, and German flak guns throughout the battlefield. And in the way back over this way, we are going to have SMG Thompson troopers running in as assistance from the Americans. Now who is coming through the beaches? That's going to be every modern army in Ultimate Epic Battle Simulator 2. We have never had the modern army assault the beaches before, and today will be the first time. There are 3.4 million modern soldiers assaulting, which is a very large number, especially for one of the most powerful factions in the game. So guys, if you do enjoy this video, please be sure to hit that like button. It really helps me out a ton in the algorithm if you do that. Subscribe if you have not already, and comment down below if you'd like to see more beach battles in Ultimate Epic Battle Simulator 2. Let's get it. Real quick before we get into the rest of the video, let's talk about our sponsor, Boot.dev. Boot.dev is one of the best ways to become a programmer in the modern world. The program will teach you back-end web development from start to finish in Python and Go programming languages. And it's not bad to be a programmer nowadays. It has huge earning potential. According to Stack Overflow, the median salary for back-end developers in the US in 2023 was over a hundred grand. And the folks at Boot.dev believe the smartest way to learn to code is to make sure you're never bored. It's online, it's self-paced, and it feels like a captivating RPG game. I took a couple computer science classes back in the day and did some minor coding when I used to work for Unity, and I had a lot of trouble learning it. But Boot.dev makes it extremely easy. You earn XP, levels, achievements, and complete quests to get on the global leaderboard, which is something I wish I had because I am very competitive. The platform at the end of the day is designed to get you writing a ton of code because getting your hands on the keyboard and shipping projects is the only way to really learn. So click the link in the description box below and use code daily tactics to get 25% off your first payment for boot.dev. That's 25% off your first month or your first year, depending on the subscription you choose. So thank you to boot.dev for sponsoring this video. And thank you to you guys for checking it out and using my code. It really does help me out a lot on the channel. Either way, Let's get back into it. Alrighty then, boys, we're pressing start right now, and the US shotgun troopers immediately start charging. I'm really excited to see if they're able to really do anything here, because the modern soldiers are pretty darn powerful. And we've given the modern soldiers M1 Abrams, they have nuclear missile systems, they've got BTR 80s. They're actually fairly stacked. So the first of the boats start hitting the beaches here. And as you can see, we have modern US soldiers, insurgents, gang members. Uh, Vietnamese soldiers, there's some uh, Korean soldiers in the mix as well. Uh, the United Nations will also be part of this battle, although I'm not seeing them at the moment. But yeah, quite a number of different soldiers here. And we're going to go in slow-mo for just a second here, just to see if any of the vehicles are spawning yet. Different things spawn at different times during these battles, so it can be a little bit tricky, but it looks like we've got Abrams coming off of the boats over this way and already firing some shots at some of these U.S. shotgun soldiers from World War II, so that'll be pretty helpful in taking them out. And on top of that, just the constant machine gun fire seems to be assisting the uh, modern units quite a bit here, quite a bit, but let's see if there's any other of the vehicles coming out just yet because it's really fun to see the vehicles tear it up as they could just be so unbelievably powerful of course the world war ii vehicles are also going to be on the battlefield they they already are but they're much less powerful much much less powerful there's the abrams again and i'm not really seeing any of the other ones just yet so that's probably a good thing because they'll be coming in more as reinforcements a little bit later on all right going back into normal speed here here's some of the un soldiers over this way they've got famases on the battlefield they're actually SWAT team members but they've got the exact same blue pattern as UN soldiers so we like to call them UN soldiers on this channel either way at the moment the World War II shotgun soldiers are getting slaughtered 
50,000 of them already lay dead on the battlefield, which is a staggering amount, and only 10,000 modern soldiers have died thus far. So the modern soldiers right now are absolutely obliterating these shotgun troopers, but this is probably the best thing that the shotgun troopers could be doing is rushing in this battle, because their range is so garbage. They're actually kind of lucky to be getting shots off, and at the very least, most of these troops on the battlefield right now that we're seeing are seriously weakened from the shotgun units, uh, so they'll be going up against the cliff sides at half health, and I just saw a nuke go off. Yes, we have tactical nukes on the battlefield yet again. The nuclear missile systems in this game are super duper fun. I don't think we've ever seen them attack before. Most of the time, the modern unit is so unbelievably powerful that we have to have them defending uh, because we can't just have like huge amounts of them because they're super powerful but i balanced this out so that the world war ii units have actually won this battle before and the u.s army uh and modern units have won this before I, I think i ran it like four or five times and tweaked it each time just a little bit and we're at the point where it's pretty equal both sides have easy potential at winning this thing nuclear missile systems back here already have uh looks like one of them is down the other is still moving around a little bit uh, but they take a long time to reload and fire and they are just tactical nukes so they're a much smaller nuclear bomb uh than you know say hiroshima nagasaki any of that other stuff they're, they're much much smaller uh the abrams still alive over this way i don't see any btrs ah oh, here we go all right btrs are pushing out over here uh, along with some of the russian units the insurgents the modern uh, U.S. soldiers, the, the United Nations soldiers, they're, they're pushing in over here pretty good. And it looks like the shotgun units on the far right side have died. That is it for the World War II shotgun units over here. On the left side, there's still a few. And right now, the modern army has 710,000 kills. And the World War II army, which pretty much at this point has only consisted of American shotgun units, has about 70,000 kills. So... <laughs> The modern units have 10 times the amount of kills, but it's only going to get harder from here for the modern units because, first of all, they're going to be going up against just the Russian wall over this way. And it looks like a few of these Russians are actually dying just from overshots from the shotgun units over that way. So that's kind of a shame. Yeah, you can see a, a number of the Russian army units over here are dead already. Um, but they're going to be a wall of Mosin Nagant fire. And then, of course, we do have the uh, SMG Thompson units coming in to fill some of these gaps as well. So they'll be joining it. Oh, yeah, we've got these uh, AT guns out here. Some Pac 43s, I think, is what those are. Uh, so those are still alive. They've got about 10,000 health. It looks like they've taken a little bit of damage. Let's take a pot shot there. I, I saw it hit the water. That was absolutely nothing. Uh, but yeah, we got some AT guns there. It, it is only going to get harder from here for the modern units. Looks like the shotgun units did end up getting about 80,000 kills at the end of the day. And uh, the modern units now have about 800,000. And here they go, lining up against the Russian line here. And it seems like the first to come out here are some of the gangster Uzi units, um, because they do have better speed than all the other units. But here comes some of the U.S. Army, the SWAT team, the insurgents, etc., etc., coming in after that and starting to pound this Russian line pretty good here. And hopefully they can start to whittle it down, because this is just a solid block of Russians just basically line battle formation here. With uh, Actually, they don't even have Mosin against. They have SKSs, which is probably worse uh, to fight against the most in the gamp because it's uh, um, uh, b -b 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 is it bolt action? No, it's not bolt action. It's um, is it semi-auto? I don't know. Either way, you don't have to pull the bolt back, so you get to fire faster. I'm not a big gun guy, so I don't know exactly. I'd love to hear the the correct name for that. Um, DMR, I guess, something like that. Uh, if you guys could let me know in the comment section. Oh wow, look at all that fire! Man, that fire is crazy going on right now. Holy cow! It is just pure and utter warfare on the battlefield. We are seeing the flak guns of the Germans up top here starting to spread some fire, acting as artillery out here, so that's really, really good to see. Um, I wonder if the Abrams have hit the front lines yet. Uh, I don't really see... Yeah, the Abrams seem to be chilling. Actually, they're able to shoot from here. Look at that. Yeah, they're spamming fire out this way. Oh, yeah. Well, why, why even move up at that point if you're just clear to fire from all the way back there? So, they're pretty much doing fine. <laughs> and then, uh, the nuclear missile systems might have all died from fire. They don't have the best health. Yeah, I think they died over here. So, rip to the nuclear missile systems. 
that's one more thing that the World War II units don't have to worry about at this point. Uh, but then the BTRs should be somewhere around here, but uh, I just don't see them at the moment. Maybe they're frontlining? Oh, here they are. They are frontlining over here. BTRs on the battlefield. They're actually getting hit a little bit from Panzers, maybe? What's shooting them? What are these things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got some Panzer Fives up in the battlefield here, and so they're shelling some of those BTRs. We got World War II tanks versus modern army tanks, uh, which is kind of fun to see. I think, yeah, a number of these BTRs back here have died, but a number of them are still alive, firing out some of their flechetta bullets at the moment. Um, and the Russian line is all but dead. There's a good chunk of them still over here on the far right side, but they're dying out. At this point, the modern army has one million kills, and the defending World War II army has 324,000. But we're coming upon the hardest section of the map for the modern army to take on. And the modern army does have, what, 2.6 million more soldiers, and the World War II army has 1.6 million Japanese soldiers up here firing away. Uh, they have, of course, extensive bunker systems up here. And we should be having some of those SMG troopers hit the front lines. Yeah, there's a number of the uh, American SMG troopers getting up here too, so they're going to be assisting a little bit more, filling up some of those gaps and stuff like that. Here's those Japanese soldiers firing away, so they've got a nice little... Uh, divot in this valley area here that they're able to fire from. Hopefully they can manage to get some serious kills here. Uh, I'm guessing they're using Arasakas or something along those lines for their weaponry. Yep, here's a bunch of modern U.S. soldiers, insurgents, U.N. troopers. I think most of the Uzi troopers have died at this point, so rip to them, but it is what it is, man. And then up this way, yeah, we do have the Panthers, so those will be pretty helpful, I think, uh, and the flat guns too, especially. Uh, these are more Japanese soldiers. Wait, okay, so the Germans must be over here then. Uh, yes, here are the German soldiers mixed with a few Americans right there. Look at that. Might as well be the Battle of Castellita all over again. Beautiful. So the Germans got car 98 ks and they're firing down pretty decently here. Hopefully getting a few kills at the very least. They certainly need it. Big time they need it, actually. Yeah, they're getting kills. Nice, nice. We're starting to see uh, the modern army dwindling in terms of their kills. Oh, wait! Hold on, the Russians are still hanging on strong in the midlines. What? Wow. Holy cow, look at that. I did not expect these guys to still be alive. I, I guess we were just focusing in on the left side over there, but the midline of Russians is still actually holding very, very so strong. How's the right flank doing for the World War II units? Okay, they've taken some more losses over here, but yeah, still some of the Russians holding out. I'm shocked by that. I really... Did not expect that because the other side of the battlefield was doing so poorly. Uh, but we got a bunch of Uzi units still alive over this way. And they're spamming fire up at some more SMG Thompson troopers from the World War II units that are coming on down. So things are actually looking up a little bit. World War II units, 600k kills. Modern units, 1.2 million. You also have to take into the account that this map, the attackers lose a lot of units due to crushing uh, when they're coming off the boats and stuff like that. So that will play a factor in this as well. Over here, uh, we still got Sherman tanks left alive. I'm not sure if they're firing or not yet, um, but we've got a number of SMG troopers as well as British uh, stem gunners over this way too. Uh, and are those German flak guns still alive? Pachons? Yeah, German flak guns still alive over this way, and they're they're doing great cover fire. I mean, look at these cheeky little tree positions here, a, a wee bit of camouflage, and uh, they're firing down at the enemies really, really nicely, so I love to see that. Um, yeah, the, the left side for the World War II unit seems to be doing not fantastic. They're sending more SMG troopers down, but the modern units are kind of raiding these bunkers big time at this point, uh, so that makes it a little bit tougher for them. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're coming up. The left side is not holding nearly as strong. The Japanese front, essentially. But the middle right side is holding great still. Even the Russians still alive over there. So we might be seeing like a sweeping flank action from the modern units here. Which could pay off really great for them if they can get around the flanks and swing. Um, but again, there's still a ton of these SMG units for the Americans coming forward. And they're just plugging gaps, doing a great job at that. So that's, that's good to see for them. Uh, what are these? Are these modern units? Yeah, these are modern units over here. And of course, still constant numbers coming from the boats too. Uh, so pretty good stuff. And this little blockade is still Russian World War II units. I guess they have better sand dunes over here. So they have a little bit more cover and some pillboxes and stuff like that. So that might be why they're doing a little bit better than the, the far right side. I'm not entirely sure. But why don't we do a small time lapse of the overall battlefield here for now? 
And it seems like the World War II units are making a little bit of a comeback. Okay, so we just witnessed the Russian beach units uh, getting killed. They, they are gone now, and uh, we can see there's a mix of U.S. and uh, Vietnamese soldiers coming in this way, it seems. Those AKs going brop, brop with the glizzy gap. Um, and, oh, are there some Russians still over here? Weirdly, there's some Russians in this tiny little pocket of resistance here. <laughs> Might as well be a Stalingrad-esque defense because they are somehow managing to hold out. And there we go, they're dead. Okay, so now the beach units are all dead and it's going to be up to the cliff units uh, for the World War II soldiers to end up winning this thing. 1.2 million World War II soldiers still remain and 1.7 million modern soldiers currently remain. So the World War II soldiers have done some serious work here on taking out a large portion of the modern units and the crush has also, uh, the crush error glitch, whatever you want to call it, bug, um, has helped them out considerably too. But it looks like, I mean, these cliff sides are really, really good defensive positions. And then not only that, there's only a few avenues where the modern units are going to be able to come in from towards these upper portions of the cliffs. And then it turns into like a valley of death where they're, you know, these British soldiers will be able to pour fire down with little resistance coming up at them. Plus, there's still the Shermans left alive. Uh, I believe the flat guns should still be left alive over here too, somewhere. Yep. Flat guns left alive, and they're still spamming out some fire. Uh, and I don't know about the Panzers. They, they might be. I'm not. They, they were over here somewhere. Oh, yeah. We still. Oh, no. These are all dead. Okay, rip. <laughs> all right. Uh, this side, actually, again, the, the far left for the World War II units still not doing fantastic. It seems like this little valley area is starting to give up some ground. SMG troopers of the United States are coming in to try and assist the Japanese, but the Japanese seem to be struggling quite a bit over here. Um, but, they, you know, they've still got some bunker positions. They're still they're still trying to make it happen, which is good. As long as they don't capitulate fully, we're okay. And you can see this valley is just swarming with modern soldiers right now. Look at that. You can see the insurgents, the UN, uh, some Americans in this area. Again, most of the Uzi units have died. I don't see a ton of Vietnamese or Russian units either. So, yeah, they, they might have died as well. Uh, over here we got more Japanese soldiers, but they are getting flanked hard left over this way. Uh, so they're doing a bit more of like a line battle defense over here, which isn't really the positioning that they're going to want to be in. And actually these modern soldiers over here look a lot more fresh than the guys in the valley. So they've probably taken less damage and are maybe fresh off the boat over this way. So they are probably doing a little bit better and they're managing to get the flank on these Japanese units over here. Not fantastic. Not fantastic at all. We're about to break 1 million World War II units remaining, uh, which is a little bit daunting. That's not the best situation to be in, uh, but at the very least, it looks like 1.3 million modern units still alive. So they, they still outnumber the World War II units by a little bit, but I could see the World War II units making that comeback fairly soon. Uh, American and British soldiers tag teaming over this way as these modern soldiers start to make their way up the mountainside uh, still getting a constant stream of enemies coming on in I think the Abrams are still firing from the way back let's see there's the dead nuclear missile systems they only got a few shots off so they weren't super effective I actually don't see the Abrams I don't remember exactly where they were but the Abrams potentially could have come forward at some point here. Uh, oh yeah, they are. They're throughout here. Okay, so they're actually still basically acting as artillery fire for the modern units, which is not a bad idea. Looks like a couple of them did die a little farther up the beach here. Oh, there's more Uzi units over here. <laughs> nice. Okay. Uh, so yeah, the constant stream of reinforcements still coming in, still challenging the World War II cliff sides here. All right. So we're at 1 million World War II units, 1.11 million modern units. Let's go ahead and watch them charge these cliffside over here in a small time lapse because this is coming down to the wire for both armies, I think. Okay, modern units are making it further up the cliffs now. However, this is really challenging combat to be in. We got Germans and Americans right here just like spawn camping them practically. These guys come up over the cliffside and instantly get domed by Car 98K and SMG Thompson ammo. Like, just getting absolutely rolled right here. And this is exactly how the World War II units make their comeback, because they have been on the back foot of this entire battle, and now finally 
they're starting to make it happen, and it's through the cliff uh, sides here. This is, this is the only way that they're going to win this is by just hanging out and getting kills this way. Uh, most of, Oh, the BTRs made it all the way up here before dying. That's crazy, dude. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, most of the uh, SMG American troopers are still charging down. Uh, a few of them are in places, but, uh, you know, defending. But most of them are kind of just coming to the edge and firing, which honestly makes it harder on the modern soldiers because they're constantly having to deal with these guys popping up over and over and over again. And so they're dying and just, you know, being a nuisance against the enemy. Real guerrilla warfare strategies right here. Just being a complete and utter nuisance. So that's pretty frustrating for the modern soldiers i am sure but then on top of that these dug in bunker hillside positions are just the absolute worst to take on just absolute obliteration as they approach these areas um and quickly they are starting to die out now 500,000 remaining modern units 800,000 remaining world war ii units finally the world war ii units um you know, came back in the lead here, and I think they are going to win this thing finally, but it took a lot to get to this point, and really, it's just like the cheese position at the very back end. We rarely see the modern units lose because they have better guns, better accuracy, better missile units, better tanks, so going up against, uh, you know, a static position like that is one of the few ways... Oh, lag, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! One of the few ways the modern units can actually lose these things. So, let's go ahead and time-lapse this uh, hill charge here and just watch modern units getting absolutely destroyed and World War II units sitting pretty at the top of the hill. Alright, the modern soldiers have lost the positioning now and are slowly getting petered out. They've still got a very strong force over here. Uh, yeah, very, very strong force of modern soldiers and UN soldiers. So. This is actually a pretty pretty good section, um, but the middle ground, they've almost completely lost. Uh, they've got some more troops, you know, making attempts up here. we got some Vietnamese soldiers making it with their AKs. Uh, but overall, it does seem like World War II... Oh, look at that! 730,000 World War II units and only 250,000 modern units remaining. So in the last, uh, you know, three or four minutes during that time lapse, modern units, modern units lost 250,000 soldiers World War II units only lost 80,000. That's how strong this positioning is for them right now. Absolutely insane. Uh, well, I think we should time-lapse the strongest of the modern units, which is this area over here where there's the glowing ball of bullet death. Because <laughs> these guys might have the best opportunity to actually like come up and uh, do the flank that they were trying to do this whole time. Yeah, they've got a lot of fire pouring into these Japanese units, but still the Japanese units have just alpha positioning right now, and it's making it real hard on the modern units. Let's check it out. All right, these modern units are putting in a little bit more work, but they've only got 100k left. They actually did take out the vast majority of the Japanese soldiers uh, and are now moving through the rest of these guys over here. But at the same time, I mean, it's pretty much Joe for form. 625,000 World War II units left alive is real brutal to go up against. I, I don't think the modern soldiers have this, but I mean, never say never. Never say never. They're just kind of getting moved in on and kind of crushed. So, yeah, we'll let this play out. We are now at 40,000 US, or sorry, modern soldiers remaining uh, versus 582,000 World War II units. So, actually, modern units are still getting a lot of kills now, which is great, but I mean, they don't have nearly enough soldiers left. All the fighting is going on here. It's pretty much, <laughs> it's finally almost over. I, I keep saying it's almost over, but it, the, the modern units are putting up a fight, so we'll let it run. There we go, boys. Oh, wow, lag. Okay, I don't know what's happening. All of a sudden, my computer is like lagging like crazy, but as you can see, through the lag, uh, negative 20 modern soldiers left alive? I, I don't know how we may, I don't, how did that happen? Did 20 World War II soldiers join the modern soldiers and then die? I don't know. Negative 20. <laughs> and then 500k uh, World War II soldiers left alive. Absolutely insane. 
Uh, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Please be sure to hit that like button if you did. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already and comment down below. I'll see you all in the next one, boys. Peace. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Be sure to click that subscribe button for more content and hit the notification bell if you'd like to be alerted to whenever I live stream or upload. Thanks so much.